in the first section of this particular class <coughs> on uh, study of meditation. I would like to give you some basic ideas. Meditation <coughs> as a practice is uh, very confusing. And on the other hand, a meditation is a way of life might be better to look at. And the sitting practice of meditation that we're going to institute this point is that uh, simplifying basic psychology, basic problems as it was presented by the Buddha. And simplifying this case is a question of uh, no expectations to the technique, that whether this technique is going to liberate you or going to show you a certain particular flashes of excitement, mystical experiences, whatever. I would like to present this particular meditation situation extremely simply without working on a certain particular metaphysical philosophical overlay as such. But at the same time I feel that if you could go through this particular training that we are presenting throughout this particular course, I think it would be much better than just purely catching a short glimpse of it. So again, I would like to ask your particular commitment and sit for this particular training program completely as much as you can. Otherwise, there's a lot of uh, gaps, missing the points, and unnecessary confusions which might take place. So, please try to stick around if you can and um, follow this particular instruction. I'm not particularly saying that certain practices that we present are much more enlightening, much more promising than other techniques that might be presented, you might have experienced before. But what I'm saying here is that if you could stick, go along with exertion and patience and this particular discipline that you might have a chance to realize yourself, realize yourself, understand yourself. Maybe such understanding may be extremely boring. <laughs> such understanding is maybe you don't want to do. But nevertheless, that is the case that we can't reject ourselves before we know what we are. So I'm encouraging you to be very brave from that point of view that please don't chicken out, as they say. 
and reject yourself, or congratulate yourself for that matter, but try to work with the techniques, traditions that we presented to you. So this one, I would like to present a very simple technique, which has been developed throughout the tradition of Buddhism, and tradition that I myself be trained, tradition that be recommended by the Lord Buddha himself. I would like to present a very simple case, a simple situation, and I want you to try, just simply try. And there will be assistants who had been already trained under my directions, who will coach you, so to speak, help you, and work with your practice of meditation. And there will be a certain particular hours and situations will be presented that you can sit either group situations, which will be good, necessary in some sense. And also, particularly, it is also important that if you can sit by yourselves at your apartment or homes, whatever you have, a living situation set up. And meditation, basically, according to Buddhism, at this point it is the idea of uh, bhavana, which is the Sanskrit word bhavana, B-H-A, bhavana, V-A, N-A, bhavana, which means exertion, discipline, which is the basic point. Unless you are not inspired to discipline yourself, you are hopeless. Once you are halfway through disciplining yourself and trying to give up hope is also hopeless because you are creating further congestions and further indigestion. So this particular course is very demanding as it be presented by the tradition and the lineage, and also I would like to stick with that particular process. If you're going to stick with us, please do so. You're welcome. I'm sure that you will understand certain ways, thinking, skill, and clarity. If you feel that you've been put off, because there's so much effort and demands made on you, I prefer you to cop out right at the beginning, which is some kind of heroism, I suppose. <laughs> so, think about that. Seriously. It's important. I will not work with the, this particular course as a very direct course that I'm working together with the help of my teaching assistants that you can work with that particular situation and you sit regularly, you follow a particular discipline and a particular experiences which are by no means dramatic and purely rediscovering yourself, I'm afraid. And I do not promise, on the other hand, at the same time, rather, that you're not going to see chirps, gods, heavenly realms, colorful, mantras or yantras, none of those. 
it is very simple, extremely down to earth, to the extent it's irritatingly down to earth, and extent extremely down to earth so that you can see colors of your own existence. The earth will begin to come back to you rather than you getting messages from the heaven as such. Meditation in Buddhism is extremely severe. What we are doing here is extremely traditional, non-trippy, if you like to use that word. There's no trips involved, no kicks involved. Absolutely not. <laughs> so, I would appreciate if you could work with us. Not that I want to convert you into our particular style, and approach necessarily, and not that I want you to reject you because you don't accept our style and approach. It is an open situation, but I think it is worthwhile to apply your exertion, and it is necessary I am sure you will learn something out of this because that I have learned something out of this myself. And this is not supposed to be a testimonial session particularly, but I felt myself that I have gained wisdom and clarity myself from this and I am giving it to you as I have learned, as I have gone through myself, through the basic training and disciplines that I have received myself. The only difference is that you don't speak Tibetan. The meditation situation involved, according to the Buddha, threefold. The one is called, what's called, Shamatha, S-H-A-M-A-T-A, Shamatha. And the second process is about what's called Vipassana, which is V-I-P-A-S-H-Y-A-N-A. -A -A. A. Those are the Sanskrit terms that we used. <clears throat> Shamatha means development of mindfulness. Mindfulness, which we're going to do together at this point. Either group situations or individually. And the such meaning of mindfulness is up to you. And this particular meditation practice is uh, paying attention to what's happening, namely your breath, your ordinary breathing, your breath. Say, for example, when you sit down and try to rest, first thing you do is try to regain your breath because you pay so much attention and maybe sitting down and relaxing, trying to get to a place when you want to relax. You walk towards your place of relaxation, you walk and then you sit as we ordinarily say, <laughs> the breathing plays a very important part in the ordinary common experience that we experience. Natural breathing, natural situation. First thing we could clutch 
in terms of relaxation and peace, shamatha means development of peace, literally. But peace in this case does not mean without a war, nothing to do with the politics for that matter. And we are not talking about a particular sense of peace that you should get off in a, in a, in a, what's the word? Uh, psychedelic. That's the word. I suppose I'm looking for psychedelic peace or peace that's being uplifted. We are not talking about such peace, but we are talking in terms of peace in this case is non-action. That is precisely the feeling that when we say, when we sit down, or we have a very heavy time with our friends, a heavy time with our parents, a heavy time with something rather business, we sit down and we say, Phew. that kind of flop we are talking about. But I don't want you to misunderstand this particular thing by saying that you could get that instantly. We have to apply exertion, which is a vriya in the Buddhist term, in the patience, which is kshanti. We have to exert such experience and discipline. And this discipline I would like you to try in the sitting practice and meditation from tonight onward. I want you to sit. If you have leg problems, you can sit on a chair if you like. But if you have, if you have no leg problems, and I prefer if you sit on the floor, there are cushions provided, or bring your own blanket, cushion, or whatever. Sit down on the floor. You don't have to fold cross-legged in a, in a lotus posture. That's unnecessary. Just form half-legged, half-cross posture. Sit down, as you usually sit down, like an Indian, American Indian version. Just sit down, as American Indian version. Sit, sit on the cushion, but don't make a big deal about that. Now you're going to meditate. Just sit down <laughs> and relax. And um, straighten your back spine. And straighten your neck, not to the extreme, but somewhat extreme, somewhat deliberate as if you are going to ask your lover that you that you are asking for his or her marriage. I'm going to ask you, that. would you like to get married to me? So that kind of approach is semi-relaxed, friendly, seductive, but, <laughs> but straightforward. And then you can fold your hand in meditation posture if you like, or you can put your hand on your knees, which is also known as mind relaxing posture, which is the same thing. It doesn't really matter all that much. And then I want you to just feel your breath, the natural breath. If the breath comes from a result of your running, to get to the place, or something like that, which would be very rough. Or if you had a very relaxed time with your body, your breathing would be very shallow. But it doesn't really matter. Just use existing natural breathing. <coughs> then sit quietly. Listen to your breathing first to begin with. Just to listen to your breathing. Just the breathing coming out of your out and in your nostrils. Just listen to it and settle down for a few minutes. And then 
begin to discipline your state of um, awareness, a state of awareness, state of uh, inquisitiveness, by then you have nothing to do but breathe. So you be inquisitive, have nothing to do with your breathing at that point. You begin to wonder what can I do with myself and so forth. So that's okay. But then try to focus everything on your breathing. Listen to your breathing. Feel your breathing completely, properly, as much as you can. But don't force yourself, don't hold yourself too tight. Like an Englishman trying to speak to somebody with the upper lip. But you're dealing with your breathing very naturally. <laughs> Just natural breathing. You're sat there, you're about to address your lover, you are there, so then just go along with your breathing. And the first step is just follow the breathing. Very simply, the out breath particularly, go along with it, and not particularly trying to feel your temperature in your nostrils, or breathe especially as for particular particular situation as such. But to breathe out, as you breathe out, you go out with your natural breath, very simply, extremely, very simply, naturally, not big deal. You're not actually meditating as such. You're just breathing, very simple. You are just breathing. Go out with the breath. At the same time, I would recommend you to open your mouth a little bit wide, a little bit open. Don't hold your tight lips. <laughs> as if you were saying word A. Just open your mouth a little bit as if you were saying word A. Go out with your breath. Your attitude is going out with your breath. Your attention is going out with your breath. And as your breath goes out, dissolves at the atmosphere, space around you. Don't try to follow too far. Just let it be. Then there's a gap. Uncertainty, maybe. And your breath comes in automatically as a physiological function. Your breath comes in as your lung requires, your breath comes in. So at that point, don't try to come back into your lung and your body particularly. Just let it be. Let it drop there. Your tension is dropped. Your lung is coming in. Then there's another breath coming out. And you're going out with again. And your lung is breathing out. There's a gap. So do that way. A very simple and there's... You don't have to tighten your body or neck particularly, except the sense of uh, simple simplicity of that whole thing. So I would like you to work on that particular practice and just to be... There's another problem which comes up, which is the thought process, thinking process, in the, mid, in the midst of those situations, all kinds of thoughts. Thoughts of attitude to your... In life, future plan, conversation with your friends, your parents, your relatives, what kinds of things come through. But let them come through. Let them just come through. Don't try to say they are bad or for them they are particularly good. Just let them come through. Just let them come through. Let them come through as simple as you can. Let them just come through. Don't label them. Don't say they are good or bad. By letting them come through, you begin to find that there is a sense of uh, openness that you don't find them particularly threatening or particularly helpful. They just become the general gossip that you begin to hear through the traffic. 
if you settled yourself in the in the in the city, you begin to hear through your window, there goes a motorcycle, there goes a truck, there goes a car, and there's somebody shouting. You begin to find them just to, so what? And you begin to become involved with them at the same time at the beginning, but at the end you begin to find they are just so what? So similarly, traffic of your thoughts and uh, robustity of your mind begin to become just just basic chatter that it goes in the universe, which is okay, which is not okay. So what? Just let them go through. And I think you're going to make a good job out of this. So that's the basic technique and practice of meditation. And this is for the first time I have publicly advised people to sit how to conduct themselves in meditation practice. But I think this particular interest that you have expressed coming to Naropa Institute and you have inspired, you have read books, and you have studied that you have thought that you can work with us uh, with such understanding. Although a lot of you haven't spoken to you personally, but I have some kind of trust in you that you can do it. You can work with us. So please try to do that. So that's the basic point. So that is the first session of meditational class. And if you have any problems and discontentment, apprehensions of all kinds that um, you are going to work with the, my teaching assistants, who are, I think, here. Uh, maybe I should introduce them so that you have some understanding of who they are. Should uh, see them. Can you come out on the stage, possibly? My teaching assistants, if there are anybody, please come along here. Yeah. Nomura and uh, Bill Indich and uh, Dave Darwin. I hope I remember everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> Naraina, Rich, Tom Rich, whatever I can change what his name. And a friend Louis and uh, Kenneth Green or uh, Krishna Green. And uh, Eric Hall. <laughs> Michael Cohen and Robin uh, Cohen and uh, his name <laughs> Howard Moore, Howard Moore yeah. and uh, what's his name? Dana Dabney and David Long. So these people are going to work for you. <laughs> Uh, sorry to be such dramatic, but I think you have to catch some glimpse of them, which would be good. And everybody's got to work with you, and the time is set up, and they have their particular office set up to work with you, so we could discuss and um, work with us. And this particular meeting, I don't think we should have any particular questions period, you can ask the students here who work with us, so you can work with them. Thank you very much. Thank you.